the foe, as in Joey Foley, will not be here today. Uh, due to put complicated reasons of starting this thing, we'll just get on the roll with Bo Scottman Report without the foe. But uh, also, we got to remember that the foe Scottman Report, where the we is silent, we have Peyton Weaver. Hola. And then we have Parker. Yeah, it's me. Parker Mann. Yeah, I'm, I'm just Parker Mann. Yeah. The, re the rest of my last name isn't there. All right. So, uh, how are we doing today, boys? Uh, it's been a it's been a very slow day to be honest. Tired. Oh, tired without a doubt, I agree with both of them. All right, yeah, now, as as per Dunn and journalism class, we did get some topics thrown up, and uh, to I think Parker, you're first with topical levitation pathways. Yeah, topological levitation pathways. I'm sorry, to text, but yeah, I. So basically, it is a concept that I came up with that deals with how we remember things, and. I know what I know. There's answers for that. You know, we have some sort of membrane or something that in our head or in our brain that like dictates how we remember certain things in fiction. And how does that make you feel? It makes me feel lonely. Oh, but <laughs> well, <laughs> but but so I was I studied. I didn't really study. I kind of looked up the Wikipedia definition for what topology was. I was mm -hmm. curious. I just saw it somewhere. So topology, if I remember correctly, and I'll pull up the. Exact definition. Uh, He's got sources. He's got websites. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wikipedia.com. <laughs> the most reliable yeah. website. So, yeah. So topology is the mathematical study of the properties that are preserved through uh, deformations, twistings, and stretchings of objects. So basically, it's just taking geometry and shapes and then morphing them. But there are specific rules to it, such as you cannot take a shape and put a hole into it. And you cannot take a shape with a hole in it, and you can't put a hole, and you can't fill the hole. What exactly. about a donut? Well, a donut, you see, that 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 is, that is a shape, and uh -huh. it, can, it can form into a mug. But a donut cannot form into a sphere. I think you lost me a donut. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> so, all right, well, so so like a donut doesn't have a hole. Or, yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm wrong. What? <laughs> a donut has a hole in it, right? Yeah. And a mug has a hole. Yeah. So you can change a donut into a into a mug. It's possible, but. You cannot fill that hole that the donut has. It breaks the rules of topology. What if you just like break the donut in half? Well, we're not talking about like if this is a real world situation. <laughs> this is just talking about we the cause old. a black hole by we ripping just, a donut in we, half. We just create a, a, a vortex. Um, so basically, in our heads, right? Yeah. We have this space, really, where our our collective consciousness floats or levitates, right? Mm -hmm. And it creates these shapes that deform and morph to go to different memories or have or picture different things in our heads. Yeah. And when we can't remember certain things or they literally have never happened, then our shape can't morph into that because it's breaking the own it's breaking this rules of topology. All right. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, man. This, this is totally <laughs> that's great. And if you guys hear small voices in the background, know that it's not my thoughts slowly <laughs> see, seeping into the mic. That is actually the people on the other side of the room, while all the teachers, yeah. and they're having a meeting. We had to get this set up quick and after school. Yeah, it's getting a little late. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, but it'll be done through time, and maybe we'll even have Lister as a as someone in the podcast as which, a. As a guest appearance, uh, yeah. So, do you, so you guys have any questions about these uh, topological levitation pathways? How did you get into this? Why? Well, why? So I Just remember, why? <laughs> so, th th there's an actual like fake story to go along with this. I was on Discord one day because you know I'm a fat Discord mod, and oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was listening to music. I do a uh, discography runs where I'll listen to a band's entire you know set of albums within a few days just to get an idea for who they are and stuff, and just find yeah. their music. I was listening to this band uh, called Between the Barriers and Me, and they're like this uh, really technical, progressive metal band. They, they got a lot of like really weird titles and super long songs, but they're really good in my opinion. And one of their album covers is just a man floating in the air. Yeah, and yeah. I, I just got the idea for levitation, and then I typed in topology or topological. I didn't even think that was a word. Like I just, just... I typed it in somewhere to mix it with levitation and make it sound cool. Turns out it was a thing, and then that, that's kind of where it started. Really, was when I just, just, I, just, I, just I just ran Google searching. <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I was I was randomly Google searching, and I took those two, put them together, and then added the pathways to make it seem a little bit more feasible. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I spent I spent a good two and a half hours coming up with the original concept for that. Oh. Yeah, and I and I I told somebody about it, and 
Yeah, they didn't get it, so I, I've refined it. I mean, it a I mean, bit. you can also add another person on this because I I have no clue how it works at all whatsoever. Well, I mean, like, so think about it. There, because there's the theory of, like, well, like the main theory of time. This obviously does not count towards like the religious theories of time. This is like the scientific theory of time, where we cannot travel into the future. It's impossible because that hasn't been made yet. So you can't think about something that's not there. Your line will stop. Yeah. You can't go past that. And in the past, of course, you can remember the past, but you can't go back into the past because what you've done has already happened. You can't change anything. So if you think about it, topological levitation paths would kind of go on that, kind of like lie on that exact same line. You can't travel past your line, but you can't travel too far back into your line. So you're basically taking Einstein's theory of time and space. Where yeah. You can't yeah. go back. You're trying to steal away. Einstein's stuff without I'm not his sources. Stealing Einstein. I think you are. <laughs> I honestly think you are. Uh, to anybody in chat, I apologize. Uh, I can't really talk much. Uh, but welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I can. Uh, Payne, was it you who put how I'm a teenage dictator? No, I that was me. That, that was, was you. That was oh, of all people, I would expect Peyton to do that. No, mine yeah. was. Why don't we use? I do have a topic. Okay. It's, uh, why don't we use Jeep stuff? In military oh no oh, this is gonna be a good 10 minutes are but are you familiar with the concept of jeep stuff yes i know jeep stuff but like okay. just to just to understand this we just made a doc of a bunch of random topics that we all wanted to do and so we can like all equally talk because you know parker was talking in the most of the one in the first one yeah we're going with pain and then i guess i'll go next but yeah go go on about jeep stuff okay. parker, <laughs> do you know what jeep stuff is i know what jeep is it's a jeep. it is a car it is a that's car. that's is about as much as i know yes. I know some so, don't have so, doors so the concept of jeep stuff is primarily based from a uh youtube creators uh they use the term jeep stuff or also known as c4 oh in a famous ga- in a uh, franchise game battlefield 4 you were able to put jeep stuff or c4 on your vehicle and launch it great distance by exploding it Mm. Now, I feel like this could be feasible because with explosives, they do tend to lob, lob objects at great distance. And depending on the type of charge and explosive types you have in the vehicle and its underlayer armor, you can th- theoretically and physically launch your vehicle without harming the crew. Now, yeah, that's one thing I want to ask. How are people not going to get, like, you know, get flung out because, you know, some Jews well, don't have doors? And, like... <laughs> I just <laughs> I would thought we were going to talk about cars, and I'm like, okay, that's fine, but I guess we're talking about flying cars. Would that be the very first flying car? It, it could technically be the first <laughs> flying car. It wouldn't be, uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Economical? It wouldn't be that, but yeah. <laughs> it would technically be a flying car. What you would have to do is probably get a enclosed vehicle that has doors and everything to keep the crew safe. Maybe pat the inside down, and if you want, you have to have like an ankle padding and whatnot. What about whiplash? Yeah. Like I said, padding. Like oh, you literally, like you probably have to fasten yourself in like those fighter jet like seats. Yeah, fasten yourself in. And what you would probably have to do is underlayer the underneath the vehicle with heavy armor, so that like you don't get shrapnel from the explosion or concussion from the explosion happening and injuring the crew. Well, oh, injuring the crew, but not exploding the car itself. Yeah, well, that's what <laughs> the armor. That's the car's more important. The armor There's is. actual armor that could, like, take the explosion? Well, yes, that's, uh, yes, there is. There, it's called ERA. Uh, I think it's ERA stands for, uh, crud, hang on. E, I gotta look this up. I am We're so looking sorry. it up, e, but. ERA. What the what? I, I mean, mean, I mean, like, what, ERA. What like I guess beneficial? Well, that's the question. <laughs> I mean, I did see like a sh- like a movie where like they launched people out of off of a tree okay. and then like became their own little armor e- by shields and then just ERA <laughs> is a explosive reactive armor. So yes, you can theoretically use that, have the concussion force eject the vehicle, but also having the armor protect from anything from shrapnel or anything going into the vehicle. Okay, another question: How would it? How would you make it? So like, so give you a situation: We're sending this car. Like flying, I don't know how many miles per hour, but somewhere, somewhere in the lines over the hundreds, probably. Okay. You would also 
Okay, I'll, I'll get back to uh, the amount of C4 you're going to probably oh, need yeah. to shoot it. It's going to probably be a lot because cars are pretty heavy. But also, how are you going to get it to land straight on the ground? And here is our special guest, Mr. Lister. Hello, we'll get back to your questions in a second, Peyton. Uh, introduce yourself, Mr. Lister. Oh, hi, I'm Mr. Lister. I just came in to see how the recording was going. I hope it's going well, and I hope you're having a wonderful time. Enjoy the show. It is It is going quite amazing. But, yeah, thank you for the little uh, meet and greet. If you want to stay here, you are more than welcome to, because then you could be our fourth person, because uh, he is not here at the moment. Oh, well, I, uh, I wish you the best of luck, uh, but I've been here too many hours today, so I, uh, I'm going to be taking off, but... Have a wonderful one, all of you, and you li and the listeners as well. All right, thank you, Lister. And Joey in spirit. <laughs> and Joey in spirit. But let's get back to our topic of conversation. C4. Why? <laughs> why, why? Why do this? Well, one, explosives are fun. Oh, okay. Military, especially military engineers. They love dealing with explosives and ejecting them with brute force. And who but not, but with threats, like to go flying. Oh well, yeah, that's a good point, but I, the landing, I can, you're going. I can attest to that fact. My dad was in the military, and he loves explosives. I mean, so, I guess, fun. yeah, I guess they're they're pretty fun, but impact, how is the jeep just not going to just crumble and when it well, hits the floor? what you would probably do is you can add a parachute to the top of the vehicle. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is just like, sound, this just sound like some weird A team stuff, and I just you know, now how many... now my next question well, is because I'm not that's gonna... entirely impossible because we do paradrop tanks into the battle. That is true. Now, okay, so say this is like would the armor be on like the back of the the the, the back bottom of the car? It would to like give it a like, good flip. Well, it would, well, you don't really necessarily want it to flip. It'll probably be an even spread of the explosives underneath the vehicle. And have an even layer of armor, but with highly yeah. thickness, and probably with the ERA to help protect it from shrapnel. Yeah. So it may, mainly be the concussion force in, like I would say, the heat. Wait, I didn't think very much about heat. Um, yeah, heat, but also <laughs> the <laughs> explosion. <laughs> what What about the tires? Wouldn't those just go flying off? Depends on where you're looking. Well, what? <laughs> if you're using tires, most likely it, they would burn, but. Tires, just don't it put takes tires. a lot of heat and time to burn off the rubber. True, but think about the amount of explosives you're going to need to launch a Jeep filled with people in it. It would probably be like five poor people, but yeah. But you also got to figure, U.S. military budget. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, All right, well, hold on. Yeah, so speaking of budget and stuff, like, think about this from like a practical money standpoint like how beneficial would this even be to the government to pay more for this stuff to launch jeeps and military i think trucks? von Braun would be proud of you right now so let's just go with that uh little, little history fact von Braun was wasn't he uh, uh in world war ii he was one of the german scientists that helped build Rick rockets Toffin? no <laughs> he built rockets for the germans but uh americans then took them and then hit them uh, they hid him in America to help them with uh, rockets, to make yeah. rockets of their own. Wynne von Braun, a German-American aerospace engineer and space surgeon. Yes, he was the one who helped engineer space rockets for us yep. after World War II. I know my space. <laughs> I know your I am, you. Know, I am I. You know ballistics. Yes, but we'll, we will get into space in another time as we need to keep – I need to keep questioning Peyton's logic on this. Yeah. Marky. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm the hearing. Logic here is yeah. A how, okay, the next thing. Okay, impacting on the ground. I guess that works. But how are you also going to get it to land on all four wheels? Well, like I said, parachute. Because once you initiate drag, and you have a heavy metal like metal object yeah. hanging down, it's initially going to be. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I didn't think through that. I was morally thinking when you said throwing jeeps at like over 100 miles per hour by explosives. I was thinking, you know. Just like without parachute or anything, and it just goes flipping like crazy, like someone's coming out. Well, of you also got to figure if, if you're going to initiate a flip or a opposite um, emotion, motion that you don't want, yeah. you would have to pack more explosives for that side you want to initiate the flip. Yeah. Extra motion. Next question: Why? Why? Why even do this? With this, <laughs> how does this give us combat advantage in a war or a fight? One intimidation. <laughs> we need to intimidate them. Yes, we shall intimidate the enemy With by flying trucks. Flying trucks, yes. 
I don't think it's intimidation. It's just probably confusion on why they're seeing a flying <laughs> jeep come at them at over 200 miles per hour these, from the sky. These dudes are just seeing these jeeps exploding from the... <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Like, like, so, oh, there you go. Also, confusion because, like, the opponent or Oxford would not know why the hell these jeeps are just exploding themselves in the air with jeeps with explosives. Yeah, it also gives an intimidation factor that these guys are willing to go into a vehicle, explode themselves, and launch themselves in the air to their LZ point. Why not, like, just like <laughs> knowing our military budget? Why not? Why not tanks? Well. Exploding mean? tanks. Exploding <laughs> flying tanks. So you want the tank to explode on impact? <gasps> no. That's what you just said. You want to explode. I, well, well, I, okay, okay, okay. well you, what I mean is that instead of a Jeep, why not a tank? Well, you can, actually. Oh, my God. Like I said. I oh, thought I would geez. stump you. <laughs> this got like worse. Said, you can. It just takes an immense amount of explosives. And also armor underneath the, the amount of explosives you would need to take a Ooh. tank off of the ground and, and actually still... that's not too hard to do. You only because so, in <laughs> Afghanistan, of course IED. you know the amount of force needed oh, to push a tank. How much up. force is needed on? Uh, you would need tank. at least about a two hundred, maybe five hundred pound bomb with a modern day Abrams. That, maybe that's a lot. Think about also, you know, the bottom of where where is this bomb going to be placed at? Where are they going to like launch it if they need that much explosive to like, launch something? Like I big. say you're going to need a tilted, elevated platform. Yeah, yeah. With the explosives on directly, evenly placed underneath the vehicle. Yeah. Which then you would also need to thoroughly place more explosives underneath it to get a longer, higher velocity distance. Okay. No. <laughs> Just no. Just no. <laughs> oh my. It is impractical. Your opinion well, is in Of course well, it is impractical. Why it? Why not? Why not just take like a, a Titan plane or something like that, like those huge planes that like carry C-130s. things, and then just drop jeeps. Jeeps that would save us so much money instead of using thousands of dollars of like C four to launch. Let me give you this question: uh, AA factor. Was that anti aircraft factor? What if the enemy has anti air? We have a plane filled with tanks can and- an anti-air also counter a flying jeep <laughs> no how actually not because it is not identified as a flying vehicle it is not identified <laughs> as a flying aircraft it is identified as a ground unit okay hold on i have a better idea for these flying jeeps see we just take the wings of an airplane and super glue them to the side of the yeah, jeep not and not, the not weld not weld them we super, super glue we 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 just super glue these gigantic you know airplane wings and on the back we just like you know duct tape some like rocket fuel or something and then we, then we shoot the rocket fuel and then now wait i got the, the best Soviets actually have did that before oh wait, oh, wait. <laughs> Sounds don't like, please don't get into any World War II facts. Or else this will like, be a longer uh, podcast. Sounds like I need We're to change my allegiance. We're only at 18 minutes. We got plenty of time. Oh yeah, but you getting on World War II stuff is that gonna is make true. that will be like podcast among podcasts. <laughs> that would true. take forever. Here at the Faux Scotland Report, but the we is silent. You see. We don't get political. We don't. Well, we are not going to get political on this on this podcast. Even though Peyton, yeah. Wait, but, we won't. We won't speak. Of any politics, man. At we mostly being silent, it is not very silent. Yeah. <laughs> not really. oh. oh my goodness! All right, do we want? You know what? Is it? Is it my turn? Is it my it turn? Is. It is your turn. Everyone's plan in the zombie apocalypse. All right. If the zombie cool. apocalypse actually happened, I, me, me, and my friends Joey, Joey would back me up here on this if he was here. I don't know if he would remember it, but I had a full-on plan of uh, the. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. The uh, FTG fl- uh, floor top gang. Think of it, right? If we just lived on top of of a roofs rooftops, we would be perfectly fine from almost all zombies. Because think of it, if we're going, let's go off of uh the Walking Dead zombies. Since a lot of people know Walking Dead, if you've watched it or not watched it, you still at least probably know about the show, unless you're living under a rock for the past fifty years. Uh, <laughs> it hasn't been out that long. Well, it's not been out that long, but like, 
Come on now, we all know what The Walking Dead is. Yeah. Or if like if even if you've not even seen any show, you at least know Walking Dead. It's about zombies. Right. Uh, very slow, very very dumb, and they don't know how to use their bodies that well because they're parasites getting controlled. Uh, but think about it, right? If you use just a rooftop to stay on, like a Casey's rooftop that's flat and stuff like that. They would, like, if, like, a horde walked by, you guys would be completely fine. Okay, well, yeah, so I have come I am, like, back in the day, I was really into zombies and stuff. I played yeah. a lot of video games. I actually watched The Walking Dead. I stopped watching it until, like, season five, because then the show kind of dragged on. Yeah, but, that's what I've heard. But, um, like, the whole rooftop idea is good, depending on, like, the context of the zombies that you're dealing with. Because, like, Walking Dead zombies, you could do that just fine. Yeah. Because they're not... They're not that strong. Like, early on in the show, they are pretty strong because they basically have the same strength as humans at the beginning. Yeah. But as the show goes on, they obviously get a lot weaker. They'll fall apart if they try touching you. But if you look at something like Resident Evil or Dying Light, oh. those, oh. Zo- those zombies are, A, intelligent enough to, like, open doors, yeah. climb, and, B, they are strong enough to kill you. They're also – mu- there's a lot of mutant ones. But, yeah. yeah, just to back it up, those are uh, – Resident Evil game, the franchise is another game type of thing about like zombie or well what i think it, there are more parasites than zombies they're about yeah. like yeah. parasites yeah, yeah, yeah virus like, like a virus the but like virus. But technically there are zombies, zombies yeah because the first game was kind of a zombie game. yeah basically i'm mostly thinking about the more realistic terms because yeah. i don't feel like anything would be a mutation yeah. parasite that would take control of us like more not like obviously the zombie apocalypse is the chance of it are extremely slim yeah but like if rooftop game well also like i mean if you're on the rooftop how would you like let's say there's like hordes or somewhere like the place that you're staying on top of is you know overrun like let's just say you stay on top of a gigantic apartment uh, complex and so you're gonna have to go down but what if that place is just completely overrun at times and you won't be able to go out and get supplies what will happen what you gotta do what, what, uh, what the plan is is basically you don't do like big buildings you do like uh, uh rooftops kind of like walmart target Right. Like any sh- uh, shop, not like the ones that houses have that are like kind of triangle shaped. Yeah. More of like the ones that you just like can walk around and stay on. And the only problem I could see with it, unless you guys can throw them at me, which I'll try my best to counter the argument <laughs> against them, is winter. Because winter would be a hard time because yeah, because yeah. yeah, you because you don't want to stay on down in like the actual store or any like area you're I mean, in because you can because I mean. I mean, if we are going to stay on the Walking Dead thing with more realistic, yeah. The, the there were the Telltale video games that came out, yeah. which were choose your own adventure style Walking Dead experiences. They are all super fun, except for season four. Season four is a disaster. We want to think about season four, but season <laughs> two, which I think season two is wrongly hated on. Sometimes I think season two is very good. Yeah, but in the sh- uh, in that season, there's a large chunk of it that's dedicated to staying in this big Walmart or like Costco. Yeah, I saw, yeah, I remember that. And granted, you don't spend a lot of time there, but it does show that you can do something like that you can take a store and kind of change it around because even after it falls because spoiler alert you know the place falls apart you know they get over on the zombies but that's because the villain is controlling the place so yeah but at the end you actually like one of the endings you can get uh, at the end is where you end up back in that store and you rebuild it so i mean theoretically if you had enough people and you had the right strategy you could take just take over that store and then yeah you know barricade it or something I, I'd say, like, always stay, like, rooftop game always stays on the roof, but, yeah. like, if need be, like, let's go with Orion. Like, if the zombie apocalypse happened in Orion, I feel like I would, I would go on the KCs, yeah. and then, again, uh, I would try and find, like, any group possible to start with at the beginning, because once the thing starts and, like, maybe you're a month or two in, trust, you can't, like, almost trust anybody else, because... Almost like anything is, uh, people all start going laws. crazy. All, you know, like all laws are gone. People, all like, people entire are just, anarchy. Yeah, like, yeah. People are just gonna do whatever the heck they want because they have that free will now. Yeah, and all that together, you can't trust your old friends because, like, I don't know, or someone can just change completely from yeah. all the things they've gone yeah. through, and then they'll try and come back to you as a friend, and then, bam, just like that, they could backstab you. But think of it this way: you also with the rooftop ideal. You can also have the, the high ground yeah. on anybody. Okay, I want to give out a question here to keep my argument. All right. What if, say you're on the rooftop, mm-hmm. the only access is ladder point, which I'm assuming is what you want is a ladder. Yeah. 
What if the building gets swarmed? If the building gets swarmed, the bigger idea is like uh, getting like uh, resources and like foods and right. water and stuff like that. If we're going by horde uh, stances, usually they just walk on by as long as there's not like you know, I don't know. If, did they what ever is, use scent? Uh, I. Yes. Uh, yeah, if I'm 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 pretty sure they're like sharks, where if there's the, like they can yeah. kind of smell blood, basically. Yeah. So let's just say theoretically you're close to this horde and you have an open wound on your arm, they could smell that. Yeah. They could find you, but also like let's just say there's just fresh blood somewhere. They're attracted to that. Yeah, and that that would be like obviously the main problem. But good news is that like if you're on a rooftop and they're just swarmed around like the area you're in, you can slowly pick them off. Even though like a horde is a horde, you can, it will take ages to do that. And ammunition if if needed to do that but the thing that you can do about it is that uh the other idea to rooftop thing is that you can do like after a while resource building and gathering you can do la like not ladders but uh why am i blanking uh, bridges on. yeah bridges and stuff like that uh, across the different rooftops right. because you know if like everybody if all of orion was just scattered out and no one was in there anymore you can just like do uh bridge to bridge to different rooftops True. and do stuff like that how would the bridge structure how would the bridge be structured would you have like a post in the middle on the ground or would these just be like free floating bridge uh kind of like a mixture of both because in orient like uh you can there's a bunch of like nearby trees that you right, can use right. cut them down take logs and like start like building an actual bridge off of it because Although it sounds like a hard idea to do, uh, over time that could probably be easily figured out and stuff like that. I wouldn't see the bridge structure working too well if you decide to add a post to like link a bridge that's a little too long. I'm assuming the horde or whatever zombie force there would be to knock it down. Yeah. How, how, like how would you be able to repair it that and recover? True. But this, also think about like storms and stuff because yeah, because better. because no matter what, Mother Nature is going to be undefeated. In True. If we're still talking about this, uh, like our environment, it, the, really the worst thing would be is wind and thunderstorms. Yeah. That would probably be the But however, like in the zombie apocalypse, like if you're building bridges and stuff, your supplies and materials and technology isn't going to be as it's advanced. Be limited. So sure. yeah, you're definitely not going to be able to build the strongest uh, structures in the world. Obviously, over time, you'll be able to have more free reigns to find these things and slowly advance society again and build better things. Uh huh. And I even searched it up, and, like, it seems kind of legit. Bugs would honestly be the best allies we could have because corpses are obviously, uh, you know, have flies and stuff like that. And since they're undead, like, a bunch of flies and stuff like that would go to them. And it would honestly take out a lot of the population of zombies because cicadas and stuff like that would all just make them all yeah, gone. And all their bodies somewhere. are already decomposing. There's a yeah. bunch of, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, Ex like exposed organs and warts and stuff there you know like like your quintessential zombie you think about like their guts are really hanging out of their stomach and stuff so like yeah I'm... hopefully no one's eating during their study hall because that would kind of sting on this topic <laughs> yeah, well, yeah well just just a wee just, just a wee bit yeah. okay yeah okay i got the next topic that's gonna be we're all gonna be able to talk uh your way is what is your favorite uh game like oh yeah well, yeah what best I video put, game we I played individually one. i put this one um actually i kind of don't want to go first i just want to see what you guys have Peyton, hey, can you go first my I'm favorite still my favorite game that is a hard one um the very best the very that, best that you have played individually like all the time yeah well just like not just with friends like this is a game you 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 put time into well, I would have to say War Thunder. Yeah, I, I think that was going to be coming. I, yeah, I'm not surprised. I've played that game for so long. I played it since late, late beta, maybe mid beta. When did it come out? It came out like for a t two thousand. Hang on, it was like two thousand twelve. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you've been playing it? Wow. Would, well, I also also like I was given, I was denied ass access from like the computer for like twelve years. Oh, I was grounded. Also, check out uh, twitch.tv slash flying fortress triple six. 
Bioshock series. Foster Panda with a Bioshock And quickly, series. quickly uh, explain this, uh, Peyton, but you're called WTF Gaming. Uh, WTF Gaming, that is my YouTube channel, uh, my personal YouTube channel, which the acronym does not stand for what you need. It stands for War Thunder Friends Gaming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Not not anything, not, no bad words <laughs> whatsoever. Vile. No, yeah. November 1st is when War Thunder will officially release. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, now give us a reason. Why this is your favorite game and explain to the, the people uh, listening on what it's about. War Thunder is a massive multiplayer, like I guess, simulator type game, dealing with pre post World War One or interwar vehicles to modern day military vehicles. Uh, recently, they have added warships, which was not a thing. The game first originally started out as aircrafts, and then proceeded on to land based vehicles like tanks, uh, infantry vehicles. And yeah. then they started advancing toward naval warships, which have become very, I guess, I guess like refined. If, I, if that's the word I'm looking for, there uh, there are still a few bugs and whatnot. Yeah, when I played that one singular time, God, and that was stupid. But yeah. uh, it's, it, it's not a bad game. Like for how and it's free, it's free to play. Yeah, free to play. play. You can play it on Xbox, PC, PlayStation, whatever. Even Oculus Rift, which I'm gonna try yeah, and do something VR, soon. It's VR supported. There are some events that the community holds, which are very fun, uh, like Battle of Britain. I've seen a few YouTubers watch and play that. It's super fun. The community yeah. is very supportive. Uh, but yeah, it's. I would say it's a very much a trial air game. It does, however, taking prog in order to get to top tier stuff, like to the final end of just one single country, <sighs> one land. Land-based vehicle, aircraft vehicle line takes a, a long time to complete the game itself with just complete every country now, get top tier stuff, modifications, crew experience. It takes, if you're playing on average two hours a day, it takes like over maybe 10 or eight years to complete. 10 or eight years? And it's it was it came out in 2012. So I, <laughs> the game's not like, even 10. Yeah, dude. It's just like, dang, some someone's still but trying to fight the, for the but entire those world. Who won't, like, do have yeah, probably. Bought with gold nickels, which is like the premium currency of the game. So, uh, it is. It ta- I will say it does take quite a bit of skill, especially with the aircraft portion. It, you do have to know some skill, know some flight maneuvers and whatnot. But overall, it is fun. Uh-huh. So, there are different types of game modes, like arcades, which is like more of the relax. You can just goof around, whatnot. Yeah. If you're not too skilled at it, then there's realistic, which is more of the intermediates that know the basics of how things should work, how like physics, ballistics, uh, aerodynamics, and stuff work. And then you have simulator, which is like the hardcore, hmm. the most realistic thing you can get. The friendly fire is on, everything accounts for calculations of shell velocity, bullet drop, um, view and perspectives, uh, leading your targets more uh like wind drag and everything you can think of that would calculate into a battlefield yeah all right well nathan let's move on, uh, let's move on to you all right uh my favorite game and uh to talk Sorry, to parker lady. about last time about uh you played individually i'm more of a person that likes playing with somebody else playing yeah, right. together yeah. with somebody Makes sense. and that being we uh, don't starve together that is, a, that is a good game. I don't start I've, together. I've heard of it. I've, I've seen bits of it, but uh-huh. I've never really understood it. I have it. played it a, a, a handful of times. Yeah. Uh, to explain, just to give a quick example of the game, is uh, you have a bunch of little characters that uh, whenever they talk, they have their their voices are different instruments. Mine be, My favorite being Weber. Uh, he's a little spider he's a little spider dude. He's uh, fun to play. But uh, every other character is... Uh, Awesome. They all start with a W, except for one character being Maxwell, and he's basically the main bad guy of the thing that you can play as, and he has he can show shadow people, and and uh, and we don't start. And, and, or, I keep saying we don't start together. You basically sent to this other world that's kind of like Earth, kind of meh, or they have different biomes, but there's other things like beefalo, which are buffalo, but like I think it's uh, beefalo or like beef. I don't know what what they go with. I'm it, just but. guessing that like what buffalo. 
Yeah, buffaloes and cows. That's basically it. And then there's also different kinds of things. I think they still keep rabbits and crows. But in together, I, I just love it so much because the main reason why is it's, it's a survival game. There's like it takes a long time to beat the game because there's so many different bosses. Uh, but we'll have Logan. I think has beaten all of them except for like three certain ones. And then there's so many mods as well that go into the community. The community is great. Like all the people are nice and stuff like that. And uh, just all of it in, in together, it just makes a fun game to play with friends. And seeing how long you survive because there's the four seasons: winter, uh, fall. Uh, summer, and then what's the four seasons? What are the four seasons? Uh, what for? You mean like, like environment? Yeah, environment. Uh, summer, summer, winter, 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 spring, or fall. Yeah, spring and fall. Yeah, like and all that. I forgot spring. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, has, don't we all? <laughs> ah. yeah, pretty dirty. But, but uh, uh, we got somebody in chat. Oh, Monster ooh. the Panda. He says, "I I love Don't Starve Together. The Tree Giant are." Who the tree giants are? Oh, tree trees. giants. Basically, there's a uh, tree giants are uh, basically a trees. Oh, they're trees and they're Whoa. guardians. I know, crazy, <laughs> right? But uh, if you chop down too many trees, the tree guardian gets kind of angry and he comes and attacks. And has very slow movement, but he takes he does a lot of punch into his hits. But it's the game altogether is just so creative on how they made it and stuff like that. And in all. I just love the game in itself. I just like playing with friends, but like just not uh, right now. We don't often play too too much, right. yeah. which kind of stinks. And the worst about it, bit about it at all is that Weber got a whole update to himself or rework, and I love it because he gets to control all many all the different spiders now because they made so many different spiders. And oh my goodness, yeah. Sorry for people with arachnophobia out there, <laughs> but <Me>. uh, <laughs> same. I'm right here. Uh, He's just he's a great character, but honestly, yeah. It's not it's not like a scary game, at least I don't think, unless you see like a boss coming at you out of nowhere, because each season has a different boss. Usually you start off in summer and then it goes on like that. And honestly, I feel like uh it took forever for me and me, Joey and Logan, when we played it, to conquer winter because you would have uh the beef the beef below would get uh uh, like would get more angry because it was mating season for them and stuff like that, and they would attack anything that was nearby them. And penguins would come out of nowhere, and f- you can't grow any sort of crop, which is yeah. you know kind of hard when you need food like that, and you have to go kill and possibly die and stuff like that. Oh, so we all got different. We I like when we all played together. Buffalo need a stick. Oh, dude, they the they. Stick. If you try and bonk one, the entire crew's gonna come <laughs> after you, and just you would die in it instant even with like the character wigfrig who's mostly like there to do fights and stuff like that she would get pummeled by a beefalo because beefalo honestly are the very first objective you need to do when you find or when when you get in the game itself because beefalo not only they attack uh things or any like there are certain times when wolves come out of nowhere and come attack your team every like now and then but like they also attack anything that's nearby them beefalo and then they get screwed over and yeah that's how it works, and uh, I just yeah, and all and all together, I just love the game so so much. But uh, Parker, all right. what is your favorite game? So I'm gonna have like a little bit of an intro thing. There. I actually heard someone in chat said the Bioshock series. I believe is it. Yes. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Yes, that I was Foster the Panda uh, Bioshock. Yeah, I have played yeah. Bioshock Infinite once, like a year after it came out. Obviously, that was a while ago. I was pretty young, but I I do remember playing it. I thought it was a pretty good game, but. I personally am kind of different from you guys. I prefer playing by myself, even though I do play games that have multiplayer abilities. Some mm-hmm. games I've played are technically internet only. I just play by myself. Uh-huh. But I grew up playing single player experiences, yeah. all that. Like, you know, like just some examples of my favorite games. Uh, Ma- the first Mass Effect game, I think, is a masterpiece. It's such a fun game. Uh-huh. Uh, the Telltale Walking Dead season one. Okay, I can for agree the longest with time was my favorite video. Game. I can understand Walking Dead uh, Telltale season one. Season, season one. Uh, Dude, without a doubt, we we love. Uh, I know not many people because we're not gonna go into lore on the Walking Dead and Telltale series because yeah. that would take a whole podcast. Well, well yeah, also because that's not the game that I'm picking. It's just it's yeah, the that. Really but like. let's just get it out there. We miss Lee. We do. We do. We, 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 we definitely miss Lee. I also play a lot of sports games, and uh, before anyone questions if they even care, yes, my favorite sports game is a Madden game, but it's Madden 2008 for the Xbox 360. <sighs> 
<laughs> I decide. Ma- Madden, two- Madden 2008 is a masterpiece. But mm-hmm. um, so in case you guys obviously don't know, obviously people listening will not know, but I am a massive Batman fan. Like the Dark Knight's my favorite movie of all time. Some of my favorite memes are all those weird Joker memes. That's just who I am. And when I was four years old for my birthday, um, I got a little game called Batman Arkham Asylum that oh. had just previously come out. And I, this may not be a hot take anymore, but I think Arkham Asylum is the most innovative superhero game ever made. And this makes you feel like Batman. It, like Batman. it makes me feel like I'm. <laughs> you lost Pan of Earth, buddy. What, 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 what? what did he say? What the heck? He said he, said he lost with Earth Parker. Ah, oh, well, shucks. Yeah. Well, so. I Sorry, mean, man. I have beaten this game like. Probably, uh, like, I'm no joke throughout the collective years I played it, which I got it when basically when it came out, and it's been 12 years. I, I mean, 50 something times, not counting my couple hard mode playthroughs that I haven't died in. Yeah. So I, I, I know the ins oh. and outs of this game. You lost him with the Madden, that's why that's it. Oh, well, well hey, ignore the Madden. It's just Madden 2008 is a very nostalgic game for Madden me. Madden is just so bad. It's well, now, 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 nowadays it's trash. Like I It's the same Madden. game over and over again, but they have slightly Let's just get off the Madden it. talk. <laughs> God, Matt, dude, Madden makes me so furious nowadays. But, yeah. Um, so Arkham Asylum, uh, yes, I will I will be spoiling the plot. So if you haven't played a 12-year-old game yet, I oh, recommend it. Oh, I, I need to plug my ears. Oh, I haven't no. heard it. So basically, <laughs> uh, the guy who wrote the game... Um, was a longtime Batman writer. He wrote on the animated series from the 90s. He wrote in comic books. He's yeah. actually one of the men responsible for creating Harley Quinn, which is one of Batman's Ooh. most iconic characters. So he, he definitely knows the character. And he took a lot of inspiration from my favorite graphic novel of all time, Batman, A Serious House on Serious Earth, where it takes the concept of Arkham Asylum, which is this big mental prison that all of Batman's villains go to, but they're taken over by the villains. Yeah. So, Ooh. and Batman's trapped in there with them. But, you know, it poses the question, are they trapped in there with Batman, or is Batman trapped in there with them? Well, if they all attacked at once. Yeah. Well, no, so that's the big question, because a lot of people fear Batman. You know, that, that's the whole point of him. Very scary, rich man. So, in the game, it starts off with you being Batman, taking Joker yeah, that's, to the... That was just too real, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was just too real. But, uh, so, you take Joker to the prison, he breaks out, because, you know, Harley Quinn, which they never really explain how Harley Quinn is able to kind of help break him out. But that's that is a bit of a plot hole, but it is kind of explained that's later on. Stings. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, so basically, as Batman, you you uncover the secret that Joker is experimenting with this toxin that, uh, in case you guys don't know, the character Bane and um, from Batman. Oh, War. is that is this the one where? Okay, I don't know. I don't know many Batman games. Is this where Joker just becomes a mutant? At the okay, end? yeah. Let's ignore that until <laughs> until I get there. I heard that. But stupid. Um, so basically, like the character of Bane uh, is addicted to this toxin or drug called Venom, which enhances the user's uh. Physical capacities, their muscles. Spider-Man grow. Venom? No. Okay. But, so basically, Joker <laughs> takes this Venom, and he experiments on it, and he was kind of using an Arkham Asylum doctor to do this, and they created Titan, which is just a stronger a stronger substance. Yeah. Um, and Joker wants to, like, use it to, like, build this army or whatever to live out his, like, basically his fantasy becoming, like, a, a dictator, which is a literal thing that Joker, you know, that that's something that you can think Joker would do. It's stupid, uh, but it's somewhat plausible for him. I mean, like, I think the idea, idea, ideal, or idea, blah, 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 idea of Joker is, like, mostly, isn't he doing it mostly just to fight Batman and just to have... Well, no, he's mainly doing it just to create, you know... Havoc? Yeah, like, well, because his entire point is to create chaos yeah. and create this series of unjust <laughs> but yeah that's basically the entire game and yes at the end joker does inject himself with the titan and one of the worst boss battles ever occurs that is the one downfall of this game that last boss battle is atrocious like it's it's not hard it is probably one of the it's probably the easiest boss battle in the game not counting the very first one which is basically mm-hmm. just a tutorial like it is painfully bad but the rest of the game is great like the combat in the game uh, before all before Batman Arkham Asylum came out, all the best superhero games were like kind of RPG inspired. Like uh, Marvel's Ultimate Alliance was really popular. The X Men games were all kind of that same way. Like the only other one that I can think about that was even like really good was the uh, no, it was the Ultimate Spider Man. That game is underrated, so good. And the Spider Man Two game, those games were considered pretty good. But Batman Arkham Asylum revolutionized it with gameplay. Where nowadays you notice how the attack button is always like you know, like your X, or I believe on what PlayStation. That's PC or whatever. I don't know. I'm not. A I PlayStation. don't know. I don't play PlayStation. I play Xbox. But 
So basically, like it, it, it created that, <laughs> it, uh, it, it created that entire concept of like what buttons are used for what, how the combat is even handled. Because uh, originally the game was going to be rhythm based. It was inspired by a Guitar Hero. Yeah. I'm not joking. That, that's what happened. But they changed it because like the game wouldn't sell that way. Uh -huh. So they changed it to where basically the buttons would make you do a certain thing, and the way the combat and combos work. That's still taken into account to this very day. Like uh, Insomniac Spider-Man for PlayStation 4 that came out a few years ago, which was like now in like the top five best superhero games of all time in a lot of people's opinion. A lot of that combat is technically kind of recycled from the Arkham series, which came out 12 years ago. And but like um, so overall, like this game just has a lot of nostalgia for me because one of one of the boss fights, well, there's a series of boss fights in this game. <laughs> um, Scarecrow. One, one, oh. of, one of my favorite Batman villains, you know, he's 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 all about the concept of fear. Yeah. And you play like this, the this game or like this little mini game kind of. They're not necessarily boss fights until like the very end, kind of. But you have to hide from him, like. Yeah, because doesn't he have like those glowing eye thingies? And yeah. So hit, so, so, like, but, so basically, you're like transported like his fear world, and he will one shot you if he sees you. Like you automatically die no matter what, and it gets progressively harder, and like you just you just have to avoid his gaze, and then you know you beat him, and. The, the first time I ever got that, it freaked me out. Like, I was horrified of Scarecrow, Killer Croc, who was just a gigantic crocodile man, and Bane. I was scared of all those dudes, mm -hmm. but the Scarecrow boss fights, like, fundamentally, they may not be boss fights. They may not be that innovative, but they are my favorite boss fights in a video game that I've ever played. And, yeah, like, just Batman Arkham Asylum... From, from a fundamental standpoint, is the worst game in the franchise. The combat is clunky. There are a lot of glitches. There are some plot holes. But you have to think about it in the, in the way that no Batman game before this was good. Like, that good. And mm -hmm. it was a small studio that made it. And you just got to you have to come in with, a, with this mindset that these are guys who were coming in and trying to create something new. They weren't expecting it to blow up. When was this, when was this made? Of 2009. 2009, yeah, so if you're thinking about it, 2009, that's a pretty good time, actually, you know. Well, because also, that was kind of around the time when superhero movies were getting a lot better. Because this, yeah. this was a year after The Dark Knight came out, after the MCU was started. And this was around the time when superhero video games started getting more popular because the movies were coming out. Yeah. So, I mean, you can give Arkham Asylum a lot of credit for helping revolutionize the entire genre in and of itself. But also, it was the second game I ever got for my 360. <laughs> I actually got an out. Uh, I kind of mentioned them before. Uh, Ultimate Alliance, M Marvel's Ultimate Ultimate Alliance. I got the second one for the 360. It's basically like RPG inspired uh, beat em ups with Marvel characters. Yeah, pretty simple. But I got that game. I, I actually didn't beat that game for like ten years. I eventually <laughs> just decided to beat it one day, and I did. It's a pretty easy game. But Arkham Asylum, yeah, overall. Fantastic game. The graphics are really good for the time, too. Like, the remastered version honestly kind of looks worse than the original. Ooh. And that came out in 2016 was when the remastered came out. So, called them out. So, yeah, like, right now, Arkham Asylum is my favorite game all time, bar none. I recently just went through my annual playing through all the Arkham games, and I played Arkham Asylum five times. Mm -hmm. So, I love that. I love it so much. It never gets old. And it is the shortest game. It, it Like, at most, it could probably take you three hours to beat the story on that. Oh. Alright, well, we got about 12 minutes left in the podcast. Yeah, because oh, we, 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 we are going to do it, like, only hour-long podcasts. But yeah. I was thinking to, to talk to you about this. This uh this is gonna be posted on. Do we want to say uh where we're also doing this on for our school? Would that would that be a good idea for the I Twitch chat? Know, but... Yeah, for Twitch chat. Uh, we'll just go ahead and go with it. But uh, if you guys want to know if we're gonna be posting this, it's at the Scarlet Ink. Uh, what is it? Scarlet Ink. Scarlet Ink, or just look Orion. up Scarlet Ink Orion on Google, and you'll probably see it. We post things on there but for our school and stuff like that. Um, but also for people hearing this at Orion, we also do this on Twitch. And do you want to shout out uh, your Twitch there, Peyton? Well, um, if you want to come follow my Twitch channel, it is Flying Fortress Triple Six. Everything is spelled out in numerical order. So come check it out if you want. But I do thank uh, those who stick with us during the podcast. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're still gonna have. We're still. Thank you for minutes. the input on my Madden opinion. <laughs> yeah, because, because I agree with that. That right Matt, now. Look, Madden 2008 came out 2007. Okay, it was more innovative back then. And Vince Young was on the cover. So you know who Vince Young is. Yeah, uh, the Madden. Oh, was it? Uh, Foster the Panda. Foster the Panda. Thank you. Uh, I think you were a great uh, friend of mine now. Now. What's that? 
But uh, yeah, uh, say your Twitch chat one more time. So we just like you know, everyone knows. Just you know, they yeah. already know. I've already said it a few times. Well, it's you fine. said it once. You got. We gotta get it out there so you know I'm you can good. get your reviews. I'm good. Because uh, are advertise. you at thirty three? This is America, now? guys. Well, I don't know. He he is skyrocketing on views, and he could use a it's lot more views. Because I'm in here. Because you know, <laughs> because you know, like my YouTube channel. Yeah, it says off. the one who had someone not like their idea of Madden and Arkham Knight as their favorite game. Oh, wait, Arkham Knight is their favorite one? No, saying that trashing on your on your uh, yeah, on your favorite game. Yeah, I'm just like, bro, Arkham Knight is the worst one in the franchise. I'm or I don't know, whatever. Ar- I don't, I'm not a big Batman Arkham player Knight, person. Ar- Arkham Knight was the was the most previous one, came out in 2015, and it's good, but it's not that good. Like it looks really good and it plays well, but do we do we want to do another podcast next week or? Do we I'd say I say we could start talking about like timing for people yeah. on Twitch. I say we could do every Wednesday, uh, at maybe three thirty. Uh, uh, right around there. Uh, I mean, yeah. what what standard time are we? We are, I believe, Eastern Central. If uh, Central. Oh, we could, yeah, we could literally just look up what time zone we're in. Right what now. what time? What time zone am I in? Let's ask Google because they are the biggest smartest thing. I'm <laughs> Central. Oh, Central Daylight Time. Is that no? Uh, what is my name of my time zone? Uh, da, 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 da. this is gonna be a moment because I am not the brightest of the bunch. No, we, none of us are. Yeah, that's our brain. <laughs> yeah. That's true, that's oh, true. Central Time Zone is that it? Yeah, that should be it. Yeah, Central Time Zone at three thirty is when we usually get these podcasts going on Wednesdays. Um. Big fans of them, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I mean. I guess, like, the only thing that would kind of hinder us keeping this schedule is, like, who's busy. Obviously, like, you know, if Joey gets fed up again and just leaves. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that was due to because we had to wait. Yeah, yeah, we started this one a little later because... Uh, we had uh, to wait for a little bit, and it just kind of got a little frustrating. Yeah, it got a little frustrating for everybody. But, hey, we got it. We got it in. And I think we were doing a great job on the podcast. We got people watching, and they stayed, which is amazing which I mean, yeah kind of mind boggles me because you know with my low self-esteem and confidence i <laughs> yeah just, i just, thought, I just thought everyone was gonna leave as soon as they hear my voice so yeah but, well i think they did once you said your favorite game so. <laughs> <laughs> all right that would be the podcast for today thank you anyway so, yeah all right i will i will be going live again sometime later today maybe around 6 30 7 30 and so, you'll be seeing me again or is it gonna be for uh we, yeah we can do some rainbow yeah, yeah we can do there. some Rainbow Six Siege. You are not going to see me until next podcast next I'm, podcast. because because I'm going to go home, do homework, and eat it. I <laughs> got all my homework done. I still got an English assignment. But, uh, yeah. Right. We're signing off for tonight, and uh, and that is going to be the full Skyman Report, where the we is silent. But the foe is missing. But the foe is missing yeah. for this one. For today. All right. See you guys later.